Welcome back friends. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. I'm sorry about that. I've been so caught up and busy with so many other things that honestly I kind of um, been slacking on my poor YouTube videos. However, um, I had some people reach out to me and show interest in the rooting and are interested in kind of a little bit more about how I do it. So I thought I would take the opportunity just to show you what I'm up to, um, maybe give you some new pointers. Uh, this is, it's been a while since my last video, so my techniques might have changed or have been tweaked a little bit. And this is kind of where I have evolved um, so far. Uh, it's a learning process. And like I said before, there is no right or wrong way. This is just my way and Every time I'm rooting a doll, I'm trying to do different techniques and things that might make it easier or um, more effective or look better or whatever. It's all about bettering, bettering ourselves. So um, here we are. This particular baby uh, is a baby that I had created a long time ago uh, for a newborn photographer. So she was using this doll as a teaching tool uh, or a stand-in baby for those of you that aren't really familiar with the term uh, and she was using this doll to kind of teach wraps and posing and so on and so forth so you can imagine that the baby had lots of love so over time the varnish had kind of worn away got shiny lost a little of its color um, and initially when this baby was created she was created to have real sparse hair so um, with all the wear and tear, the hair had broken. It just didn't hold up as, as much as people would like, you know, especially because it's being handled. Um, and I've told this to people a thousand times that it don't matter how good you root or how great of an artist you are, the more your dolls are handled, the more it's going to experience wear and tear. So you will have to do more upkeep, um, whether that might be doing a revarnish or a touch up on your paint or even a re -root. So here um, we are with this little peanut the art or the photographer that owns this baby um, actually referred me to another client so as a thank you to her I wanted to do something nice so I offered to give her baby a little makeover and give her some fresh coloring and new varnish and we decided to do a complete rewrite on her um, I could have left the hair in and worked with what was already there, but it was really sparse and it's really hard to kind of work around hair that's already been rooted. It can be done, it's just a lot of work. So for me, it would be a lot easier just to shave it off and start over. So that's what you're seeing here is the stubble from me having shaved the baby's head already. Um, you can kind of see the residual hair map that was from before. I don't do like hair maps that you would have to worry about erasing or anything like that. Um, in the very beginning, I would do like pencil in my hair maps and then I kind of evolved into um, painting hair maps. And I'd like to do a little more detail because it just kind of adds a little bit more depth um, underneath all of the hair. So it just really gives that um, really pretty uh, effect of having that hyper realism. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and, and do any more detail with the hair map because I already kind of have a plan of what's going on. I'm going to follow pretty much what I had done before, but we're going to do the density a lot more dense than it originally was. So here we are. I am using a 46 gauge crown needle, which you can see it's about the length of my finger. Um, this particular needle, if you imagine this portion of the needle um, being a triangle, you want to root with the needle having the flat side facing you and the pointed edge down towards the vinyl. On the bottom of that needle is a single barb. So as you are sliding your needle over your hair strand, that needle will catch or I'm sorry, not the needle, but the barb will catch the hair and do the work for you. So you're not stabbing the hair, you're just gliding the needle across the hair. Um, that was something that took me a little while in the beginning to kind of master and kind of to remember that, you know, I don't need to stab the hair. 
Um, and you don't need to exert a lot of force. Now, if you are exerting a lot of force, what's gonna happen, and this one's being a little tricky, so bear with me, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up inserting the needle past the tapered edge. If you start pushing in the needle past this portion, you're actually tearing the vinyl. So your hair will not have as good results and it will more than likely fall out over time a lot easier, um, even if it is rooted in the right direction. So this portion is probably gonna be geared more towards people that um, have been rooting. I'm using Yearling Mohair it is a type of mohair oops, from a goat that is like a, a juvenile age. I particularly like to use yearling mohair because it has a little bit finer texture and it has a little bit of a wave. So I can do a lot of effects with it. Um, this one, now I typically will do several different shades to kind of create a natural highlight or low light effect. However, I wanted to be able to um, I wanted to be able to have a little bit more of a rich tone with her, but not to go towards that reddish tone. Um, so I have chosen only to use a couple different shades. Now I can still accomplish quite a bit with just a couple different shades because if you take the weft of hair that you're working with, and you cut it into thirds, you're gonna have different sections of the same hair having different diameters of the actual hair shaft. And what I mean is that, just like I said before, it's real hair, it has a cuticle like human hair. Um, so as the hair starts to grow away from the scalp, from the, the goat or the mohair, the animal, human, whatever hair you're using, um, as long as it's not synthetic, which I would hope nobody would ever do because that looks absolutely horrible and it's not, not a very good quality. Um, but as the hair starts to grow away from the scalp, the hair is new. So the cuticle is going to have a much more finer diameter. So it's new, it's fresh, it's healthy hair. Um, so as the hair starts to age um, and starts to grow out, it's gonna start solidifying and the cuticle's gonna get harder and harder and harder and it's gonna get more dense and more dense. So then as you get towards the end of that weft, the cuticle is gonna be a lot more bigger. So you can cut that one weft of hair into thirds and have three different sizes of hair diameters to create a look that you're going for. So I pre-mixed um, this hair. Typically I don't do that. Uh, I like to do, you know, particular placement with different colors and what have you. But with this one, I went ahead and I pre-mixed the hair. So just kind of blending the hair. I, I just kind of take the two colors and I will kind of just, almost like a deck of cards, you're like, um, shuffling the hair. You're just kind of separating the hair and putting it together and separating it and putting it together to ine inevitably blend the hair. Um, I will do that with each section that I root. I don't do that with the entire hair that I am cutting because I still want to be creative and be able to mix maybe the hair that has the larger diameter with the smallest diameter to create areas in the head that look like it has more peach fuzz, but then it's got these areas that um, are much more thick and longer hair. So I can do a full root on this doll and still get that newborn style as long as I'm changing out the diameter of the hair that I'm uh, using to root and the way I'm cutting the hair. So think of it that way. The other thing I, I have found over time since I've been rooting is I stopped wetting the hair as I am rooting. And I will tell you that uh, as a previous stylist or a retired stylist, the reason behind that is because just like human hair, when your hair gets wet, it stretches. 
and as the hair dries, it's going to shrink. So the more you're wetting the hair during the rooting process, you're constantly going through this shrinking um, process as well. So when you're done, you may find that maybe the hair has gotten shorter in areas that you didn't intend it to naturally be. Um, and that's part of the reason why, is because the hair is actually receding into the vinyl because it's shrinking. Um, the other reason is if you're wetting the hair and you're combing it and you're styling it, even though it's rooted in the right direction, you're still putting wear and tear on the hair so you can end up causing more of the hair to break or to um, have too much tension and pull on it. So I'd literally just stop messing around with styling the hair as tempting as it may be um, and wetting it. So how do I control the hair uh, while I'm rooting uh, in instead of having to wet the hair? I still will get some conditioning spray but I spray it on my hands and then I will just glaze the hair ever so softly ever so lightly not saturating the hair just glossing the hair and that's to help the flyaways and all that fun stuff to kind of lay down nicely while you're in the process of rooting. The other thing I have found that works more effectively is by wrapping the baby in saran wrap during the rooting process. By doing that, that is gonna help reduce the friction during the rooting process. So you're not gonna have it constantly wearing on that varnish that you worked so hard on uh, applying or the paint. Um, I used to do like the varnish afterwards and you can still do that. You definitely can do another layer of varnish if you feel like you need to do another layer after you've done got or if, after you finish rooting. I would just um, dampen a towel and wrap the towel around the hair um, if you intend to do heat set. Um, but uh, Gosh, I'm trying to give you like a whole synopsis of information that I have been learning. <laughs> um, and obviously I have a hard time like doing two things at once. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing my best. So sorry. Anyways. Um, so yes, uh, that can be done, but don't, don't let all your hard work go to waste. Um, avoid the friction as best you can by wrapping it in saran wrap. Um, I like to do two layers, one around the baby and then one um, that the head is actually resting in, even though it's on my rooting pillow. And again, that's just to protect it and it does wonders. Um, even when you're shipping, that was the other thing that I have started doing, is if you are shipping your baby that has been rooted, I used to use like a hair net and then put like the diaper over the head to protect the paint that way. But now I've stopped doing that. Now, um, I still do the diaper, but I do it a little differently. So what I'll do is after the hair has been cut and styled, I will then wrap the head in saran wrap entirely and put a diaper on top of that. That will still protect the the doll during the shipping process, but it's also gonna leave the hair in better condition when your recipient receives it, so they won't have as much of that travel hair as they used to have. Um, so hopefully some of these tips are helping you or helping you kind of think about what um, you've been doing and maybe what you can do differently. Uh, you can see I'm still working on doing this mono rooting, which is definitely one strand of hair per follicle um, or per hole in this case, would be follicle, right? And I'm doing it directionally. So I want to do this gradually. I don't want to have a real harsh turn or curve um, you can do that, and that, that ultimately will happen when we get towards the swirl, but I want it to have this kind of nice, soft wave pattern in it um, as it's getting closer to the swirl. Uh, so I'm going to root my strands towards the inside curve, and then um, 
as I get to like the midway point, then I start kind of rotating my, my direction back towards the opposite curve. So that's kind of how I've accomplished doing the directional portion of it. So hopefully that may help shed some light into that aspect. I could go on and on and on. Um, and I'm sure for sake of time, you guys do not want to uh, listen to me ramble on and watch an entire head be rooted because I know that this is going to take a long time. Um, I'm just about halfway done rooting this guy and um, I got, you know, a long way to go. I personally take a long time when I'm rooting. I usually take about 200 hours depending on the size of the head, but on average it's around 200 hours. I have a particular rooting style and this just happens to be my style and it just takes a little bit longer but I like the results better. I think it looks more realistic. Um, I really enjoy rooting so it's just fun for me to do it that way. One of the things that I've learned to do to help speed up the process of rooting is by not moving my hand around so much and when I'm saying that what I mean is previously when I would be rooting, let me just kind of turn my pillow a little bit. Um, let me get my hair. I kind of fan it out a bit. Oops, sorry. I don't mean to shake the camera. So previously, you know, I would root a strand and move my hand, right? Root a strand, move my hand. Root a strand, move my hand. That motion can add up a lot of time. If you want to cut your time down in rooting, keep that hand still. Root the hair that you can reach comfortably. And when you can no longer reach the strands of hair comfortably, then move your hand out of the way. That tiny motion, even though it's it's so sub, you know sublime, it does add up and you wouldn't believe how much faster your rooting will go by keeping your hand still more frequently. Now these ones are real fine diameter, so I'm just having a little bit of time trying to see them. Gotta go slow it down a little bit. These are perfect size diameter to kind of use as a filler between your larger ones. Um, so that way when it's cut, it's gonna have that peach fuzz look. So I'm really excited to get this one done. Um, it was really fun to have the opportunity to do a makeover on one of these babies. I haven't had the opportunity to do it and I really enjoyed it. It was fun kind of um, tr giving this baby a transformation. And I'm sure she's going to love seeing it. It'll be fun for her client or her um, customers that she teaches. Oops. I am holding my needle at about a 45 degree angle. Oops. And again, don't stab the hair. You're just gliding the needle over the top of the strand of hair and letting the barb do the work and keeping your, your hand that's holding the weft of hair relaxed so that you're not pulling the hair out after you having had rooted. Now, because I've got more of a finer um, diameter here, I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit more so that I can pick and choose my placement of where I want to apply this hair. Um, I do more of a staggering kind of effect. I don't do um, perfect straight rows or anything of that nature. I like the natural look of it by doing it this way. Okay, I am kind of doing a little bit more slower work here because it's so fine. It is harder for me to see. That's the other thing too. I use a very strong mag magnification um, lamp that has an LED light in it when I'm rooting. In addition to using a very high magnification 
um, glasses. Um, if you think you've got strong enough um, magnification, try going just one more level stronger and you'll be surprised just on how much you're actually able to see and how when you have previously thought maybe you were actually mono rooting when you actually weren't. Um, I can guarantee you when I look back and, and think about um, dolls that I've rooted and I thought that I was doing mono rooting prior to having had better magnification, um, the hairs are so fine that it's so simple, so, so, so simple to have three, four, five strands of hair in one hole or in one follicle. So push yourself a little bit and get a stronger magnification and you will be able to see those hairs much more effectively and it's going to look so much more natural and real when you're truly doing one strand of hair per follicle. Well, my friends, I'm trying to think of anything else that I've left out, but you know, I've given you a ton of information um, and I tried to cram it all in as quickly as I could. <laughs> but um, feel free to uh, like and share this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe uh, to get more tips and tricks as we progress through um, rooting and reborning and all that fun stuff. I love to be able to share any knowledge that I acquire um, through trial and error because I know how hard it is to get started in this kind of field. Um, it's hard to get information. Not everyone is forthcoming, so I like to be able to help when I can. All right, gang. Thanks for watching and